My name is Andrea Reyes. I work for the Columbia University Cancer Center up on 166th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. And I teach in the community all about cancer screening and prevention, where it's preventable and where it's avoidable. Today, we're going to talk about preventing skin cancer and how you can do it and screening. Summer's coming too. So it's always really good to get the second spring because we've been freezing all winter. And now in the glimmers of sun that we have, I am sure a great many of you are like, yes, let's get the sun hitting my face which is fine, but not for a long time. So we're going to get into that. So one in five people get skin cancer during their lifetime. So that's 20%. Some might know it, some might not. That's not the greatest news, but good news is that 90% of skin cancers, if you can identify them early enough or you're getting checked up, can be avoided and cured. Because the good thing about the skin is that it's visible and you can just scoop it out. So how does this happen? Well, too much exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which are basically the rays of the sun. And that is the most common cause of skin cancer, but not the only cause. We know for a fact that radiation from the sun damages your skin. Even on cloudy days, the radiation from the sun can still harm. For people who go to spas or for people who know people who go to a spa and lie in a tanning bed or use a tanning lamp, those sources of UV radiation are more dangerous than the sun. They damage your skin more on the cellular level. And even from a lamp, you can get burned spots, wrinkles, and skin cancer. Anyone who does this, please do your best to get them to stop. What can cause the most harm? Exposure to the radiation from the sun around noon. So anytime in the afternoon between 11 and 3, that's when the sun is the strongest. And that's when you want to make sure that you're wearing some sunscreen. Being in the sun is important, but you want to make sure that you're doing it safely. If anyone has had blistering sunburns, especially in childhood and adolescence, basically before age 20, if you had sunburn with blisters, you now at this age are at higher risk. Having light skin puts you at risk. However, darker skin or even super dark skin can also get skin cancer. So you want to keep that in mind. It is more visible on lighter skin, but dark skin people get sunburned and they're at risk as well because we all have cells and the cells are the same. The only difference is that some people have more melanin than others. Melanin is slightly protective, but not 100% protective. We also have to think about our eyes. Some people can get skin cancer in the whites of their eyes. It's a thing. And that's why even when you buy like cheapy drugstore sunglasses, it'll say UV protectant 100% or whatever. Before I got into this field, I never know why. But the deal is that you can get skin cancer in the whites of your eyes. I think we all know what sunburn looks like. This is a particularly bad case of sunburn. And that's what it is. It's burn from the sun. We're going to start talking about what can happen if someone does get skin cancer. What does that look like? So there are three different kinds. This is a cross-section layer of the skin. The very tippy top is the epidermis and then there's the dermis, the deeper layer, and the hypodermis. And as you can see, the skin cancers up on the surface of the skin just look like a mole or some peely flaky skin, nothing too serious typically. However, look at the differences of how deeply they penetrate the layers of the skin. We know that skin cancer can penetrate all the way to bone, and we know that they can have roots, much like a plant has roots. So the best example here is like if you look at this melanoma, you see how it's going deeper into the layers of the skin? It can make a line that goes three or four inches away to the side of the initial site that might just look like a mole on your skin. And then when the doctors go to take out that cancer, they end up having to dig deep and in a different direction from where they see the initial spot on top of the skin. The cells on any of these cancers can also just break off and get taken through your system and plant themselves somewhere else. And then you have a secondary cancer. And that's why they say when cancer spreads, that's what happens. These cells that are damaged by something, in this case, sun, are not operating correctly. They're invading tissues, causing damage, and that's what cancer is. Important to know that cancer on any organ is different. So brain cancer is not the same as liver cancer, not the same as breast, not the same as skin. And the reason is that the cells have different functions on those organs. However, cancer refers to the proliferation, the birthing of new cells, in a cluster, and these are damaged cells, not normal cells. I'm going to show you some pretty graphic pictures, but it's important to know. So there's squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell, and melanoma. We'll start with squamous. Squamous can present in different ways. So if you look at the picture of this person's hand, it looks like a callus, but we know calluses come from like when you're irritating the skin a lot. This is the top of the hand. What could possibly be hitting the top of someone's hand? A squamous cell cancer typically looks like a callus. It's flaky. It doesn't go away no matter how much 
to moisturize and it doesn't heal. But here on somebody's nose, it just looks like a mole with little bumps. And here on darker skin, it looks like little holes. So it presents differently on different parts of the body and in different people. But if you have something that doesn't go away and doesn't heal, you might want to go to the dermatologist. Basal cell cancer is also tricky. We see in the top left, that's an ugly looking thing on that man's nose. That's clearly not normal. But down below here, looks like a pink fleshy wart on someone's skin. And it's behind the ear where typically people don't get sun. The other ones also look like moles or warts, but they're not. They're basal cell. Typically basal has a little hole right in the middle that bleeds sometimes if you mess with it. Just letting you know, this is how basal cell carcinoma can present. Melanoma is the most dangerous type of skin cancer. It's usually very pigmented, very dark. It has irregular borders. This one on the first photo has like a blister with some red inside. The other one presents very differently. It's inky black, but that's deep in the skin. It's not coming out. The third one, someone they think, oh, I have pigment in my heel. Well, that's a huge melanoma on the heel and all of this tissue during surgery would have to be removed. Sometimes because your hands are and your feet are always exposed, depending on where you live, this is melanoma in someone's nails. So if someone has a black spot in their nails, you ever hit yourself with a hammer or something and then that black ends up growing out because that's just a blood spot under your nail. It's a hematoma. It's a black and blue, but this doesn't grow out. This stays there. So that person has melanoma in the fingernails. So how do you prevent? Well, of course, we know that we need to protect ourselves. So 10 minutes of sun a day is wonderful when you can get it when it's not cloudy or freezing. But then after that, you should have sunscreen on no matter what. But 10 minutes is fine. So if you can walk in the shade, you use sunscreen. Even in the winter, your face and your hands are exposed all the time. So just a little bit on your skin and your lotion and you're good to go. And just make sure you cover up. And children older than six months can use sunscreen, not younger. And baby skin is really delicate and thin. So you want to make sure that you're careful with babies. So what do you buy? It's got to say broad spectrum because that means that it gets two rays from the sun, the UVA and B. The high SPF, it should be 30 or higher to protect your skin. And then you want to make sure it's waterproof because if you sweat it off, then it's not helpful. Or if you're swimming or sweating it off and wiping or swimming and toweling, you need to reapply it every one to two hours. How to examine your skin? There's ways that you can do it. So you should know what every inch of your skin looks like. And if there's a part of you that you haven't seen in a while, go check it out. So you can use a mirror and check the backs of your legs, your back. You can check the insides of your arms, check in between your fingers and in between your toes because melanoma you can get without having been in the sun a lot. Check the bottoms of your feet, use a mirror. You can have someone help you, but you should know what every part of you looks like. So if anything starts to change or grow, you know that it's changing and growing and that it's different. Key warning signs. So if you have a new growth on the skin or under a nail that doesn't heal or go away, a spot bump or mole that has gotten larger for the last few months or the last couple of years. If you have a mole that all of a sudden becomes a bump and the edges are irregular, becomes inkier, dark colors, or it changes the shape, feel, and color, or if you have some sort of sore on your skin that doesn't heal within three months, I would even venture to say a month and a half. If you're not healing, you should get it checked. So difference between a regular mole See, it's round. It's not angry looking. It's not bumpy edged. The color is uniform. And then this is a melanoma. The edges are irregular. It's got something going on there in the middle. In the second photo, you might have a mole that looks normal once. And then all of a sudden, the melanin inside the pigment is shifting to one side. And then in the third photo, again, it's shifted, but you've got all these little really dark inky spots in your skin. This is a melanoma. Clearly, this person got a lot of sun in their life because they've got lots of sun damage. And this is the melanoma growing within their shoulder and the doctors will come and just take out that piece. These are called, the dermatologists do this, the A, B, C, D, E of melanoma. You're going to go and look at your spots and this is not to scare anyone. If you have anything that doesn't look right, just go to the doctor, let them tell you. Don't diagnose yourself, please. So asymmetry, it's not round like the normal mold that I just showed you. It's got irregular borders. It's got color changes or different colors. The diameter, so more than like half an inch wide. And then elevation means 
means that you can feel it, not always, but it's higher off the skin. And evolution means that it's changing. Super important. So if you have a suspicious spot or multiple spots, or if you have never had a full body skin cancer checkup, call your local dermatologist. If you need a referral from your doctor, do that. But get yourself to the nearest dermatology office. You go in, you say, I'm here for my skin cancer screening this year. You come in, you lie down in a gown and your underwear and then the dermatologist will look at every single spot that you have they use a special light that looks like a magnifying glass with a light and they examine all of your spots they look inside your hair they'll look in between your fingers and toes under your feet you get examined top to bottom the doctors might say hey you're perfectly fine come back in 12 months or they might say you know what there's a couple of spots here i'm going to take a little scraping of i'm going to remove and that is how skin cancer is prevented if the doctors feel like there's something that needs to be taken out they'll just scoop it out give you a band-aid you leave with a couple of band-aids you're winning it's not a big deal it's not like it hurts terribly much they want to make sure that they're removing anything that could possibly be any of the three cancers that i talked about i work at columbia so of course i'm going to promote columbia if you want to call columbia dermatology for an appointment this is on 161 fort washington 165th street and fort washington is off of broadway and it's our department of dermatology at our cancer center what to look for in sunscreen. So broad spectrum, 30 plus and waterproof. Those are the big ones. There's also two other things that some people know, but not everyone. And I definitely want to bring it up. There are different types of sunscreen for those of us who are concerned about chemical burden. That's important for those of us who have health problems or weakened immune systems. Some of the best sunscreens are made for babies. Buy the baby sunscreen. Oh. It might mm-hmm. say sensitive skin. It might say for babies. There's two types. There's mineral and there's chemical. So chemical sunscreen, you put it on your skin. And when they tell you wait 15 minutes, they actually mean it because the chemical has to penetrate your skin in mm. order for the sun not to damage it. The mineral sunscreen sits on top of the skin and creates a physical barrier. The drawback for some mineral sunscreens is that they're very pasty and thick. And then if you put it on, you, like you can see the white right on your skin. Test them. Just put a bunch on your hand and just kind of rub them in and see how you feel about the smell and how you feel about the pastiness of it. But largely, I prefer the mineral because the chemical one with certain blood testing, you can find it in your blood and not the mineral. So it just kind of depends on what you prefer. So that's one thing, but you got it all right with the sunscreen. If you need a stronger SPF on your face than the rest of your body. The minimum is 30. I'm not saying everyone mm-hmm. go out and buy 30. If you can buy 50, 60, 70 for your face, absolutely. You do need sun. Like we need to make vitamins. Yeah, that's nice. important. So 30 is fine, but buy two bottles. Let's say you're going to the beach or you're going to be in the sun all day. Put on your hundred because you're going to have hours of exposure versus okay. you're just going to the store or you're going to be out for maybe an hour and then just kind of put the less like that's just how it would operate yeah. ewg.org since in my previous life been an environmental scientist it's environmental working group and what they do is that they've tested thousands of products that people put on their bodies and then determine the chemical burden of each of the products so you can go in there and look for safer i'm not really supposed to be promoting brands but yeah. so i said to get a baby sunscreen there are a couple i do like blue lizard it is more expensive mm-hmm. but just take really good care of it use it sparingly but use it yeah. but environmental working group is an amazing like you can put all of the products in your entire medicine cabinet and bathroom in there and you can see what is really dangerous for you and what has phthalates and all the other chemicals that you want to avoid go home and look at your family skin like grab mm-hmm. whoever you live with and be like i want to look at you and, and it'll be weird but who cares and then you've already seen and chances are everyone's gonna be fine but if there's someone that says oh look i wanted to tell you about this spot and now that you're bringing it up what do you think don't get scared if you see something don't self-diagnose We all have sunspots, particularly people that maybe grew up in the sunshine, like in another state or down south or in the Caribbean or wherever people are coming from. Like if you grew up always in the sun and no one put sunscreen on you, get to a derm. Go every year. 